In this video, we will answer the question, does poor posture lead to pain? Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to Physio Tutors. A lot of healthcare providers suggest their patients that they should work on their poor posture to prevent or to get rid of their back pain. In our practice, we regularly see people who are worried as they've been told that the lambolidosis, rounded shoulders, scoliosis, etc. are a problem that needs fixing. But is this justified? Let's look at the evidence to answer the question if there is an association between pain and posture. Although there are some exceptions to the rule, the great bulk of studies show that there is no association between 1. Leg length difference and back pain 2. The degree of lumbolidosis and back pain 3. Neck curvature and neck pain 4. Pelvis tilt length of the abdominals, hamstrings, and iliopsoas muscles, and low back pain. 5. Postural asymmetry, excessive thoracic kyphosis, and or lumbolidosis in teenagers and future back pain in adulthood. And at last, increased lumbolidosis in pregnant women and the development of back pain. Shout out to Todd Hargrove at this point for collecting the evidence in his blog post that we'll link in the description down below. As a summary, a systematic review by Christensen in 2008, including 54 studies, then also concluded that an association between sagittal spinal curves and health, including spinal pain, is not supported. Even if these correlational studies showed an association, it would not prove a causal relationship, which needs a prospective study design. It may then also very well be that people in pain have adopted a different posture due to the pain instead of the other way around. We admit that it seems like a plausible idea that poor posture leads to pain due to mechanical overload on certain areas resulting in accumulated micro damage. But there are a couple of reasons why this idea is flawed. First, tissues adapt to stress. Human bodies are not machines that wear out over time. Instead, the human body, including its joints, ligaments, tendons, intervertebral discs and muscles can adapt to cope with the load that is placed upon them. This is probably also the reason why even weightlifters can get away with considerable degrees of lumbar or thoracic flexion during a deadlift as they have probably adapted to the load gradually over time. Secondly, tissue damage does not equal pain. Even if poor posture led to accumulated micro damage, like proposed in the term repetitive strain injury or RSI, there are many people with tissue damage seen on imaging without any pain. A lot of studies are showing that there is a very high chance in finding abnormalities on MRI in knees, shoulders, necks and backs in perfectly healthy subjects at a certain age. So while tissue damage is a contributor to pain, pain is far more complex and linked to many more factors. Third, natural variation. Every person is different and it's impossible to talk about one ideal posture. Asymmetries are rather the norm than the exception and a person's anatomy then also dictates the optimal way for this person to move. A movement pattern that might be labeled dysfunctional in one person might be perfectly fine for another person. On this channel, I've received quite a lot of comments on the fact that my right shoulder is hanging down quite a bit, which is due to a surgery I had about 15 years ago. My shoulder doesn't need any fixing or training. I can bench press, barbell press heavy without any problems and actually experience some pain in my left shoulder at the moment. Although the left one looks perfectly fine from the outside. If we take this even further, how is an event like the Paralympics even possible? These people perform at the absolute highest level although they show incredible compensations in posture and movement patterns. So it's about time we stop blaming poor posture for pain. Expectation has a huge influence on physiological functions and certainly on pain, and we are creating nocebos if we are telling a patient about his postural flaws. 
This might lead to worrying and hypervigilance and is likely to sensitize them. We believe that we see more patients in our clinic who experience low back pain because they are trying to sit straight all the time and are afraid to slouch than patients which would generally be labeled as having a bad posture. The problem in these patients is probably that they remain in the same posture for a prolonged amount of time and that they lack movement variation, which has also been observed in a study by Bontrop et al. in the year 2019. Alright, so before you go crazy in the comment section, we have actually made a video on when posture matters as a follow-up that you can watch by a click right next to me. A lot of this information and much more can be found in our future course on the spine on our website study.physiotutors.com. Of course, we'll be happy if you leave a like and follow our channel. Skype Physiotutors, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.